Well, good morning to my brothers and sisters in Christ here on Facebook and YouTube. I just want to give honor to our Father, which is in heaven, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for this beautiful day that he has made. And we all should rejoice and be glad in it. But I'm going to come to you sharing from the message that I've been speaking on for the last couple of weeks every Sunday morning. Um, the image and the mark of the beast, the image and the mark of the beast. This is a very critical subject of the scripture that no one is talking about, but false prophets, <laughs> they, they love talking about the mark of the beast. Uh, but their interpretation of it is all false. Anyone that teaches concerning the mark of the beast and say that it's coming, their doctrine is going to be false because the mark of the beast is here. And I want to, I want to talk on this subject. And these, these so-called scholars of the word of God, they always tell you that the mark of the beast is an RFID chip. And we've been talking about that. I pray that you will listen to my last messages. Good morning to my brother in Christ, Brother Dennis Reed. Brother, you always be on my mind. I appreciate you coming and to listen to us this morning. Thank God for you. And uh, say hello to your wife, Bobby. I pray that you all are blessed and favored of God. Um, the image and the mark of the beast. A lot of people who teach on this subject, they always talk about the mark of the beast, but they never talk about the image of the beast. You always hear them say the mark of the beast is, the, is an RFID chip, a computer chip, planted underneath the skin. And I've been sharing that that doctrine is false. The mark of the beast is here, has been here for many, many years. And... Um, I'm going to go deeper into this subject this morning. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you how important it is <clears throat> by reading a verse of scripture from Revelation chapter 14. I want to read a verse of scripture from there so that you can see how important it is to understand this particular subject. All right, uh, Revelation chapter 14, I'm going to read a verse from here. Um, where God's judgment is upon those who take the mark of the beast. Revelations four, uh, Revelation chapter, oh, my, my Bible, is, pages are sticking. Well, anyway, um, Revelations 14, and we're going to go to uh, verse number 10. Oh, number 9. Verse number 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. In other words, God is saying those who take the mark of the beast, those who worship his image, are going to be killed. In other words, those are the ones who are going to suffer loss, the one who take the mark of the beast. But the enemy of, of God, the beast himself, the devil, he says, those who worship the image shall live, and those who reject the image shall be killed. So God's saying the opposite and it's of, of what the enemy is saying. Okay? So this, this subject of the mark of the beast is extremely important. It's, it's very, very important for us to understand. Now, uh, many believe that when the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, that no man may buy or sell, save he had the mark of the beast, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. When we read that, when we think about buying and selling, we think about participating in the marketplace, going to the store to buy things. That's not what it's talking about. I'm going to show you in the scripture that that's not what it's talking about at all. Because Christians, even us as Christians, we have access to the marketplace to go and buy and sell anything we want. And it's not a crime to do that. It's not a sin to do that. So that, that's, that cannot be what it means when you say no man may buy or sell. This text about the mark of the beast is talking about those who are not in the kingdom of God. Those who have not been born again. So when we read Revelation 13 and verse number 14, I'm going to start there. 
And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth, talking about the beast, Satan himself, the king of, the, of this kingdom called the beast. He deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of, of, of the miracles which he had done uh, in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. Now this image of the beast, I have shared with you that it is your paper money. That's the image of the beast. Because when you, when you say an image, you're talking about something tangible, something physical that you can see, feel, and touch. This is, this is the image of the beast. This is the power that, of the world. This is the power that Satan is using in the world to, to bring people into his kingdom. Because the scripture says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, For the love of money is the root of not some evil, but it says for the root of all evil. Therefore, if the love of money is the root of all evil, then it has to be the image of the beast, because it's the root of all evil. And the, the enemy is saying that he makes this image of the beast that the people should worship the image of the beast or be killed, okay? So the devil wants you to think that you're not going to be able to live without this. We know in, in the story of King Nebuchadnezzar, when Israel was brought into bondage, uh, the devil said the same thing. King Nebuchadnezzar is a figure of the devil. He said, you must worship the image that I have created or be killed. And we know that Israel was brought out of Babylon 70 years later, so they wasn't killed. So, so we know the devil's a liar, father of lies. In this text, he's saying all would be, be killed or die if they didn't fall in love with money. All right? Now, let me continue to read verse 16. And he causes all, both small, great, rich, and poor, bond and free, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark of the beast, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So he, when you read this text where it says, and he calls all, both, small, great, rich, and poor. It's not talking about those in the kingdom of God. It's talking about those who worship the image. Okay? So, and that's why we that's why we go wrong thinking that this scripture is applying to people in the kingdom of God. It's not talking, because you're not of the world. You're in the world, but you're not of it. See, the devil's kingdom is the world, right? So, if you are in God's kingdom, if you are have been born again into the kingdom of God, then you are not of the world. This text is not talking about those who have been born again into the kingdom of God. Okay? It's talking about those who worship the image. And when we look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, for the love of money. Love and worship, pretty much the same thing. Because both are a sacrifice of self for the benefit of others. In other words, worship is sacrificing yourself to God. And in this case, worshiping the image is sacrificing yourself for money. Okay? So, so it should be clear to, to see this. It's talking about those in the world. Bond, free, rich, poor, all that are in the world. Not, in, not those in the kingdom of God. Those in the world. Okay? That's what, this, that's what this text is talking about. So when you read it, when it says, no man may buy or sell... It's not talking about participating in the, in the marketplace of, of going to the store and buying things because it's not a crime and it's not a sin to go to the store and buy something. All right? All people do that, even Christians. Jesus said in his word, you cannot serve God and money. And there's a verse in the scripture also in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. It says, we are to use the things of the world but not what? Abuse them. In other words, when you abuse them, you fall in love with it. When you abuse money, you love it, okay? But we as believers are to use it, not abuse it, okay? So when, when this text say buying sell, it's talking about those who worship the beast, the, his image rather, those who worship his image. And whatever I said is his image, money, money, not an area of Fiducia. Money is his image. Why would the devil have to bring in an RFID chip when he already got 99% of the world in love with money. So what, he don't need an, an, an RFID chip in order to, to, um, 
to enforce as the mark. And anyway, this mark, this, this image of the beast is not enforced. See, a lot of people read this and they think, oh, it's, it's being enforced upon us. No, it's not been enforced upon us. The worship of the image of the beast is something people do voluntarily. Worship is always voluntary. No man, no man can force you to worship. See, that's, that's, that's the beautiful thing about worshiping God. No man can take that away from you. Ooh, glory to God. No one can take worship of God away from you. He can force you to do things, but he cannot force you to worship his God. Man cannot do that. Because, let me give you an example. You can enslave a man and force him to work for you, but you cannot force a man to think the way you want him to think. <laughs> so called worship is here. Worship starts here in the mind. And, and see, the mind is the same as the heart. So God wants your heart. And, and, that, and if you look back in the Old Covenant, not in the Old Covenant, but if you look back to the apostles, they, uh, the days of the apostles, they, they, were, they were told to either deny Jesus Christ as Son of God uh, by, by the high priest and, the, and these, these followers of the devil. They, were, they told the apostles, you better not teach or preach in the name of Jesus. And they said, we can't help but to do it. And, and they said, we're going to kill you. We're gonna, and it, 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 then Peter and John them said, take our lives. We are not going to worship. We're not going to deny him. And the same thing happened in, the, in Babylon of old. We're, li we're living in the spiritual Babylon age. And in the, in the, in the physical Babylon, um, there were people who did not worship the king's image that he had set up. And we, uh, God gave us some examples of some people that did, did not. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In other words, they said to the king, you can throw us in the furnace. But what we will not do is worship your God. See, nobody can force you to worship. <laughs> they, they might take your life for not worshiping, but they're not taking your life. And as we notice in that situation, the, those who worship God, their lives were not taken. The devil is a liar, father of lies. He may say that you're going to die, you're going to be killed if you don't worship the beast. But keep in mind, Revelation 13, 14 through 18 is not talking about Christians. Christians are not serving the devil. They're not worshiping the image of the beast, which is money. So when the devil says to uh, who is the king of this kingdom, he says to them, and he causes all, talking about all that are worshiping the image, both small, great, rich, and poor, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And I have shown you that the right hand represents your, your fellowship, your, your commitment, who you're committed to who you sacrifice your life to, who you work for, all right? So your, uh, your right hand represents your actions. Even the scripture, if, we, if you look up right hand throughout the Bible, you will find that it's referring to people's actions. And uh, Paul have used the term right hand of fellowship. In other words, uh, right hand of fellowship uh, means a person raising their right hand and they're committing to, to uh, a fellowship. In other words, and, and, and we, we see that all over the world, even today, people raising their right hand uh, to swear and tell the truth or, or commit to, to something. When people become members of, of secret societies and clubs, that a lot of times they have them raise their right hand to become fellow, uh, uh, the right hand of fellowship, they call it. So when the Bible talks about right hand, it's talking about your commitment, your action. Forehead, we know what's behind the forehead, the mind. That's your thought process. That, that, and, and your speech comes from what you think. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So the devil wants your thoughts. Okay? That's why he's saying forehead. The devil wants your thoughts. And not only he wants your thoughts, but the devil wants your actions to be committed unto him. And he's saying you cannot buy or sell unless you worship his image. Once you worship his image, you cannot, you cannot serve God. Once you commit by loving money, worshiping the image of the beast, you are not going to be in love with God at the same time. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. Must love one, hate the other. Okay? So, and, and, and the important thing is to understand that this text is not talking about the believer. It's talking about those who worship 
the image of the beast. Those are the ones that receive his mark in their foreheads. In other words, the devil controls their mind. He controls their actions. And, and, and let's talk about the word mark for, for, uh, for, for a minute. The word mark, when we look at the word mark, it's, it's, it's in, 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 in the natural sense, it's referring to uh, something printed on paper or whatever, an object or a tattoo can be a mark, okay? But a chip planted under your skin cannot be a mark, okay? And it's and and it cannot be talking about a chip because when you go in, let's 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 go to another scripture. Let me show you something right quick. Revelation chapter fourteen verse one. Look look at this. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty four thousand, having his father's name. The father's what name written in their what foreheads. So, so is God gonna put a chip on in your forehead? That lets you know when He's talking about the forehead, He's not talking about uh, planting something physical within the forehead. Okay, God's name is written on the forehead of this hundred and forty-four thousand. And let me go back to Revelation chapter seven, for example. Let me go back to Revelation seven. There's another text here. Okay, um, if you look at verse number two, and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of, of the living God. Notice it's talking about the seal. Seal and mark is pretty much the same thing, I would say. A seal, right? That's what uh, men do to their cattle. They seal them. Uh, they brand them or whatever. So a seal or mark can be the same thing, all right? Listen as I read. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, and to, her, and to whom it was given to hurt, hurt not the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have what? Sealed the servants of God in their forehead. Look at that. So the angel of God is sealing those who worship God in their what? Forehead. See, God wants your mind. He wants your heart. He wants you to commit to him, sacrifice unto him. But the devil wants the opposite. He wants you to commit your mind to him. You see, now, now you see it cannot be talking about a chip. Because, because if it was talking about a chip, then God would put his, his seal would be a chip. This is not talking about, it's talking about your mind when it says your forehead. That's very important to understand because the, the, those who worship God are sealed, marked, whatever, it's the same thing, in their forehead. So when you look at this, this interpretation here, you have to get out of the natural. We look not on the natu natural things, but we look on the things which are spiritual. Okay, when you interpret the word, it should be the same way. You should interpret the word because it's spiritual, not natural, okay? Special, special prophecy in the book of Revelation. So the, though the servants of God, we are the servants of God, we're sealed in our foreheads, okay? And, and what seals us? The Bible tells us we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Man, <laughs> praise the Lord. And that's all over your scripture too. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit. That's what seals us. That's what confirms who we are. That's what confirms that we are in Christ. There's a scripture says, uh, uh, I think it's in Romans 8, it, it says uh, that we have the Spirit of God, His Spirit. It's, uh, His Spirit is connected to our spirit, and that's how we know we are the children of God. His Spirit is in us. Amen? So, so we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. And, and those who worship the devil are sealed by an unholy spirit called the Antichrist spirit, okay? So those who worship the beast are those who are following, the, uh, who are worshiping the image of the beast. Those are the ones that receive the mark, okay? The mark of the devil's power in their forehead or in their hand. He controls their mind and their actions, okay? Okay? So that's what it means. So uh, let me go on to, uh, to finish this verse out. And when we look at 
Revelation 13, verse 17. And let's continue to read so we can get a clear understanding of what, what is being said here. All right? Hang tight just a minute. I'm going I'm to turn to back to Revelation 13. I'm going to read verse 16 again. And he causes all, both small, great, rich, poor, bond, free, to receive a what? Mark in their right hand. All right? Their actions, their commitment, their forehead controlling their mind that no man no man so it's, this is not talk, if you if you if you think this is talking about Christians then the I'm the true believer because a lot of people call, call themselves Christians they're not, not really Christians but God knows who are real and who's who's not who's fake so when we look at this we see that it's not talking about the believer who has been born again into the what kingdom of God the people who are mocked by the devil's power, who 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 sell, not going into the marketplace to uh, to uh, be a part of buying and selling from in a store or something. It's not talking about that. Those who who worship his image, they sell their soul. What is your soul? Your soul is your consciousness. Your soul is your emotions and your feelings. That's what you're giving up. You see, your soul is the most valuable thing you have that God gave you. Why? Because it came directly from the Father himself. Your soul is the very image of God. He breathed into your nostrils the breath of life, and you became what? A living soul. So it's your thoughts and your speech that makes you a living soul. Praise the Lord. So when you look at this, this is your treasure. This is your life. You should treasure your life. You should treasure your soul more than anything. And what profit is it to you if you sell it to the devil to gain the power of money? So that's what it's talking about. You're, you're trying to gain the power in the world con, uh, that the devil is using. It's called money. It's not a, it's not a chip. It's, it's money. Money is the power of the world. So it could, so even if you even if you did want to say uh, I, I'm not going to get into the chip thing because that's not even in the Bible, but the love of money is. So when you look at this text where it says, "And he calls all," don't let that word "all" confuse you because all represents all those in the kingdom of the devil, all those who worship the image of the beast, which is money. Those who love money, that's, that's worship of the image of the beast. When you love money, you're worshiping the image of the beast. And why is it the image of the beast? Because the devil controls those who, who are printing your money. Okay? And uh, let's look at it this way as well. He calls all both small, great, rich, and poor, bond free, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. We explained that. Right hand represents your actions, your commitment. To who are you working for, who you're living for, and who controls your mind. Your forehead is your mind. And I showed you scripture where God said he seals those who serve him, right, in their forehead. God seals us in, his, in our forehead with the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit controls our mind, our thoughts. Remember what Christ said? I'm going to send the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. He shall teach you all things. He shall lead you and guide you into all truth. So the Holy Spirit control, should be controlling the mind of the believer, the Christian. Okay? So, and those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, this text is not referring to you. When he said those small, great, rich, and poor. It's talking about those who have not been born again. Because if you have not been born again, then that means you're still attached to the world. Okay, and if you're attached to the world, you, you, you're lost. And those who are attached to the world are those who have a strong desire to, to save themselves in the world. Let me quote a scripture that Jesus mentioned. Jesus said, what profit is it to a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? So what is it that you have to sell that is valuable? Your soul. Okay, that's what it's talking about when he said buying and selling. It's not talking about going to the store and buying a loaf of bread. Because anybody can do that. Even Christians do that. Okay? It's talking about those who have who buy who, who buy something. What are they buying? They're buying uh, into the world. 
so that they can have the materialism. Of, you see, people want materialism that that's in the world. When you, it's all people should want to have material things, but your motive. That's what that's what is is important. That's what God is concerned about. Your motive. A lot of people desire to love money, and the Bible says, "For which some coveted after covet means they desire it to please them, themselves, to glorify their flesh." And that's what that's what that's where we're wrong. When we wanna want we want as much money as we can so that we can glorify our flesh. But God God wants us to use the things of the world but not abuse them. All right. And so so when this text is talking about the mark of the beast, it's not talking about something coming in the future like most people want to tell you. The mark of the beast is here. The image of the beast is here. This is the image of the beast. Money. This is what the devil is using to control the world. Look around you. It's obvious. Even even, even the country now want to go to war with Iran. <laughs> Look at it. why because Iran is is it has billions and billions of dollars of oil. That's why they want to control the, that country. So 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 and, and that's why they destroyed Iraq. That's why they destroyed uh, uh, Libya. And, and and so so America it, 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 it's America is is the beast. You ask me, <laughs> they're serving and worshiping the beast. So that's, so don't don't support this stuff because why do they want to control the Middle East to call, to control the resources there? That's that's the whole purpose. And the, and when you control all the resources, you use money in order to control the resources. And those people in that those countries, they know that this is worthless paper. They know that. That's why they don't, they wouldn't want America out of their out of their countries in the Middle East because they know that the paper money is worthless, and what they have, uh, the resources they have, they want to stay in control of them. And, and and but no, Great Britain and America, these these uh, these these powerful countries want to control everything, and they're the ones who are in control by the beast himself, the devil. The devil is the beast. And the beast, remember what I said the beast is? The beast is a kingdom, the devil's kingdom. That's what the beast is. When you look at an animal, the word animal is not in your Bible, so God uses the word beast. So when, when he uses the word beast, it's, and we're, we're talking about an animal. And the only other thing that can refer to a beast is kingdoms. Kingdoms are often, often um, displayed as animals. Okay? Read the book of Daniel. It's very clear. Uh, Babylon was a lion, and uh, Persia was, a, uh, I think, it's, it's a bear, and uh, Greece is a leopard. All right, and and um, then he said Rome was a, a animal that you couldn't describe. That's why this is where we get the the ten, the, the seven headed beast with ten horns. See, see, Rome was a, a, a animal that couldn't be described. It's, called, it's unnatural for an animal to have seven heads and ten horns. So, but but it's, so it's talking about a kingdom, and that's the kingdom we are, that that controls the world today. Look at look at Rome still controls the world. The people from Rome, okay, the people from Rome who established what we call the United States, right? They took this country from other people who were already here, right? And they're doing the same thing to this day, going in and just destroying other countries and taking over their resources. Why? Because they want to use this to control all the resources of the world. Okay, and, and and it's obvious that that's what's happening because even here in our country, water is should be free, air we breathe. They're going to be they're going to be selling that to us after a while. Everything, your electricity, everything you go to your store, nothing you can get without having this. Okay, you got to have that, and they want you to to worship this in order to have the resources of the earth and what you're going to be selling. Buying and selling, you're going to be selling your soul for for this. Jesus said, "What profit?" I'm going to end with this. Shall what profit shall a man gain if he if if he gain the whole world? This is what people are trying to gain in the world, right? If you gain the whole world, then die and lose your soul. Or what can a man give? In exchange, that's buying and selling, right? Exchanging for a profit, right? What profit is it if we gain the whole world, then die and lose our soul? Or what can we give in exchange 
for our souls. I'm going to end with this, and I'm going to share something very important to know about money. Money has no real power. You don't have real wealth when you have millions of dollars. What you have is the power that the Federal Reserve gives to you. They control this, all right? And when you, and the more of it you have, the more they control you. You don't believe me? Look at some of the people you see on your television screen. Some of those who are dead and gone, like Prince, for example. They want to control over their own music, and they want to control over their own money. But they, what they fail to realize, and what well, he didn't fail to realize it, in the end, he realized that, that he had no power by having millions and millions of these. Michael Jackson realized he had no power by having millions and millions of these, right? And, and, and so, and even today, um, you look at people who, who gain millions and millions of dollars in their accounts. If they turn against the system, if they turn against the system, the system has ways of bringing them down, like they did Bill Cosby, for example. Well, well, so, so these are the things that we have to understand about money. Money is no real power. We always ask, well, why don't uh, people come back in the black neighborhoods and, and establish businesses and, and, and rebuild their neighborhoods? Why? Because the money that they have, the millions that they have, is, is, is controlled by another power. All right? And that power controls them, and, and it controls how they spend it. Notice people who are rich on television, all they do is invest money in houses, cars, and jewelry. They, they don't use it to invest in real, so that they can empower themselves with businesses. Most of them don't do that because they can't, because the power of money is controlled by a small group of people. All right? And that's, so that's important to understand. That, so, and, and these people, they sell out. They sell out. What are they selling? They're selling their soul. For the power of money. And, and this text goes on to say, I'm, I'm going to read this part, verse number 18, Revelation 13 and 18. This is very important to understand. First, he says, no man can buy or sell and say he had the mark of the beast, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Then it says, here is wisdom. Here is wisdom. Let him that had what? Understanding count the number of the beast. So in other words, God is saying to us, now here's, the, here's where you will have wisdom. Here's where, you, here's where you will have the wisdom of God when you understand what the, what the number of the beast is all about. Okay? Let him that has wisdom, has understanding what this is all about, count what? The number of the beast. What is the number of the beast? It is the number of what? A man. It is the number of a man, and that number is six. Is six hundred? Uh, uh, that number is six hundred three score and six, and we call it six 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 hundred and sixty six. And when you look up this number in your Bible, this is very important. There are two men. He says it's the number of a man, and there are two men in the Bible that this number applies to. I don't have time to go through the scripture to look it up, but you just look up 666 in your Bible and you will find that there are two men that this number applies to. The first one is King Solomon. The second man that it applies to is Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. I'm going to share this with you and it's very important to understand in my closing. King Solomon, he received six score, three score, and six uh pounds of gold, uh, or whatever, amounts of gold, okay? But what happened to the, to the wealth that King Solomon inherited? We know that King Solomon was the richest man in the world, and that number 666 was applied to him, okay? But the scriptures say it was the number of a man, not men, but a man. King Solomon, when he passed away, the, the Israelites the children of Israel, they took King Solomon's wealth and put it in the temple of God that Solomon had built. Listen to me carefully. They put all of his wealth in the temple. Why? Because they thought it would be protected there in the temple. But God had already told the children of Israel through the prophets 
I'm going to bring, I'm going to allow King Nebuchadnezzar and his army to come in and destroy Jerusalem, to destroy the temple and take the people of God, the children of Israel into bondage. They didn't believe it. They didn't believe the prophets. But what happened? King Nebuchadnezzar came in. He destroyed the temple. What did he do before he destroyed the temple? He took all of King Solomon's wealth out of the temple. Okay. That's why this number is applied to King, King Nebuchadnezzar as well. He took all of the wealth out of the temple and he destroyed the temple. Then he destroyed Jerusalem and he took the people into bondage. This is scripture. Okay. When he got the people into bondage, then he claimed to be who? God. Because of the wealth that he had. Then he built a statue of gold. And the size of that stature was six cubits by six cubits by six, 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 six. He built a statue of gold with the measurement. The God, God gives us the measurements, I think, in, chap, in Daniel chapter three. I'm not going to look it up because I want to speed up. But look it up yourself. Daniel chapter three, it tells us that this image that the devil created was six, six, six in size. Six cubits by six cubits by six. Okay. And he... The, he commanded everyone in the kingdom to worship what? His image that he had made. So we see the same thing here in the New Testament where the devil who uh, is saying the same thing. He makes an image so that everyone must worship. We know when uh, Nebuchadnezzar made this statue of gold, it represented all the wealth of the world that he took from the temple of Jerusalem that was owned by King Solomon. So the number 666 applies to King Nebuchadnezzar, okay? Now we take it into the New Testament. We know the New Testament talks about mystery Babylon, okay? This is why in the New Testament, there is a mystery Babylon riding the beast. She's in control of all the wealth. I, I got to close, but I want you to see this. The wealth of the world is now controlled by the United States, Rome, and England, okay? The United States, Rome, and England. That's who all the wealth of the world is controlled by. The United States, Rome, and England. And they want to control all the resources of the world, all right? And they want to control, they want to use paper money. See, they got all the gold confiscated from the, from the earth, all in Great Britain, and they want to use this to control all the resources of the world, and they're telling people, you must worship the image of the beast. This is the image of the beast. You must worship the image of the beast or be killed, okay? And every man, he has to sell his soul in order to worship the image of the beast. God bless, and I pray that God will continue to keep you all in the faith. Amen? God bless you. And I, I, before I go, I'd like to say good morning to my cousin, Naomi Evans, and, uh, and my, my, my sister, Jill, uh, 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 Linda Farrington, and watching, and, uh, and many others. Thank God for you, and may God continue to bless you and keep you. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Remember, the mark of the beast is here, not coming. M money is the image of the beast.